In this video training, we'll look at some of the alternate displays that are provided in Teledyne LaCroix's analyzer software, the SASATA protocol suite. In the previous video, we looked at how you could navigate and customize the packet view. Some developers may prefer a more traditional table or spreadsheet view, which is available pressing the spreadsheet button. It provides the same information as the packet view, only it's oriented in a table or column format. It's a chronological view where traffic from your initiator ports, labeled I, are going to be on the left. Traffic from your target ports, labeled T, will be on the right. This is a frame level view, or FIS in the case of serial ATA. But we're only looking at logical FIS or frame structures. There's no primitives visible in this view. The command column shows the name of the command associated with that frame. And then there's the summary, which are the highlights from that command, including the LBA and the transfer length. Same information that is visible in the packet view. Only in the spreadsheet view, it doesn't roll up or group the various transactions that are part of each command. That can make it a little harder to understand SAS protocol where you have queuing and out-of-order completion, but it's certainly appropriate for serial ATA where you typically have point-to-point -point communications and just a simpler chronological sequence of packets. You can close the packet view to use the entire screen on the spreadsheet view. The scroll bar lets you see additional fields that are not visible in the display. You can also select any field and drag and drop it to move it to make it more easily accessible. You can add almost any field within the serial ATA or SCSI protocol to the display. Choose Add Column. Here you'll find all the ATA parameters, addressing, error bits, all the fields can be added to the display. I'm going to close the ATA. Let's look at metrics we have the option of adding performance metrics for each individual command. I'm going to choose latency. You use these buttons to add it to the display and press OK. Now we can see the latency associated with each individual command. 46 microseconds for this right FPDMA queued command. Of course you can delete any field by right clicking delete. The summary field is particularly important. You can see it already displays some of the most important fields, but by right-clicking on the column heading, you can actually edit the contents of what gets displayed. You can remove or customize any of these fields that are already set to be displayed, or you can add your own. I'll go to ATA and select ACT. I press this button. Now you'll see it at the bottom. I hit OK. Now you see ACT value is displayed as part of the summary. So you can add or remove individual fields to really customize the spreadsheet view to do exactly what you need. And for SATA testing, one thing users often need is the ability to get to that lower primitive layer. For that, we have the column view, which is really just a bidirectional flow of primitives moving upstream and downstream on a single physical link. I'm going to dock this on the right by unpinning it, make this the max view, and then I just drag this over to the right and drop it. Now I've got the column view on the right, which is synchronized with the spreadsheet view. As I click around the spreadsheet view, you notice the column view changes. So this gives you the same ability to drill down on a specific command. If I select this FIS27, this is going to synchronize with my display on the right. Now I can look at that exact command at the D word level. The tooltip provides a decoding of each D word. I prefer to actually use the pull down menu here, which allows me to manually step through each of the different formats. I can look at the 10 bit codes, the 8 bit hex scrambled hex. We can also see the primitive value as well as the type of field. So this is the lowest level of 
a view that we provide short of going to an oscilloscope. I'll go ahead and close that. One of the most important aspects of this display is the ability to verify the low level timing between primitives. That's really critical to the SATA protocol. I can, for example, do your X ready to R ready measurements by right clicking, set X pointer, clicking on the R ready, set the Y pointer. Now I can see the delta 140 nanoseconds between these two primitives. Another way to do timing measurements. Let's use the search option to find a hold primitive. It's required that devices send a hold A within 20 D words of detecting a hold on their receivers. We see the hold primitive being transmitted here from the host. The searched items are always marked with an S. Now, after right clicking on this item, go to the timestamp and set timestamp origin current position. This reorients the timestamp at zero from this point, so you can easily see the delta between these other events, including between the hold and the hold A, which is 120 nanoseconds. So that's just at the upper limit of the 20 D word timeout, but still legal. So be sure to utilize the right click menus. They offer lots of shortcuts. For example, SATA data frames can be very long with payloads up to 8K. So the column view has these quick shortcuts to jump to the next interesting event within the packet. After a hold on a read operation, the host needs to signal it's ready to resume the flow of data with an RIP. So I could scroll through the column view looking for an RIP, or I can just use the menu to jump directly to it. Here is the host signaling receive in process. It does so 500 nanoseconds after that initial hold, and data from the device starts shortly after. So this lets me step through the entire data fizz without a lot of scrolling. I can now jump to the next hold. This time it's the device side issuing the hold. I can use the shortcut keys F9 and F6 now to jump through every stage of the flow control sequence. Again, this search mechanism stays inside the packet and eventually we get to our last RIP about 198 microseconds after the initial hold. So by combining the different views of protocol traffic, you can switch between high level and the low level payload views. So you can really see more or less detail. As we saw earlier, I'll close the column view and bring up the frame inspector, which gives you good visibility to exchange level detail. These views work well together. So I'll make them the default by choosing File, Save Workspace. I'll name the file, Spreadsheet. I'll now save it. I now go to Setup, Preferences, General tab, select the spreadsheet as my default workspace. This is now the first view I'll see after capturing my next trace. No more adjusting windows and columns, I can just get right to work. Be sure to watch our next tutorial where we'll cover basic triggering and filtering.